seek you today, God.
Jesus. That's why I we worship you in this place, That's Lord. Come on, church. I, I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's sick. I trust in God. Come on, everybody. Let's see it one more time. I, I trust, trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your name in this place, Lord Jesus. We worship your name in this place, Lord Jesus. Come on, just go ahead and right now and just give God a song from your heart. Come on, a song of praise, a song of thanksgiving, a song of worship. Go ahead and just lift it up before the Lord today. Come on, we have proven him out. He has been faithful to us. He's been good to us. Come on, our God has been gracious to us. Let's just worship him in this place today. Come on, church, we're here this morning to glorify the name of Jesus. We're here this morning because He has been good to us. He saved us. He has forgiven us. He has shown mercy toward us. He provided for us. Come on, He healed our bodies. He has taken care of us. Our God is good. Jesus is faithful. Oh, come on, let's worship Him in this place right now. There's no one like Him. Church, come on, if you love Him, lift your hands and lift your voice. Oh, yes, Jesus. We worship You, God. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, you have been good. You have been faithful. We sought you, God. And you heard. And you answered. And you provided, God. And you performed a miracle. Oh, Jesus, we need you right now. Jesus, we want you in this place, Lord. We desire for your presence, Jesus. Oh, we love Jesus, come on, if you love him right now, tell Jesus how much you love him in this place. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, Ramasid and Amande. We worship you, Jesus. There's no one like you, God. There's no one like you, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Come on, let's just begin to testify right now. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. Come on, just dust it by right now. Yes, you have been good, Lord. Oh, you never let us down. You never forsake us, God. Hallelujah. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. the kingdom and all will be added seek first the kingdom and all will be added seek first the kingdom come on church all will be added whatever your needs are today seek jesus in this place hallelujah seek first the kingdom and all will be added seek first the kingdom and all will be added 
One more time. Let's declare it in faith. Seek first the kingdom. Oh, seek first the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I sought the Lord, and He heard. And he answered, I sought the Lord. And he heard Thank you, Jesus. Answer, I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust. Come on, sing it right now. That's why. Everybody. I, I sought the Lord. And he heard. And we testify today, Jesus. You never failed. You never failed us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one. I trust in him. Who will never fail. He will never fail. Seek him, you'll find him. I trust I the Lord. Trust Come on, sing it out. My Savior, the one who will never, will never fail. You will never fail. You never fail, God. You never fail, God. You never fail, Jesus. We put our trust in you, Lord. Because you never fail, God. You never fail. You will never fail, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Glorify your name in this place, Lord Jesus. Oh, we glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Just take a moment right now to behold the beauty of the Lord. Come on, just worship Him right now in the beauty of His holiness, church. In your own words, from your own hearts. Come on, just begin to express your love for it towards Jesus. Hallelujah. Be grateful to Him. Be thankful to Him. Praise His name. Glorify His name. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify your name. There's no one like you, Lord Jesus. You are big. You are great, great God. And you are greatly to be praised. You are faithful, God. Hallelujah. And you will never fail. You will never fail any one of us. You will never fail. You answer prayers, God. You meet every need, God. You perform the miracles that we desire. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So Rabakaramash Kiravan. Thank you, Jesus. Erivana Masikiriban. So Rabona Namasikiri Bakara 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 Bandi. 
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We glorify your name. Receive our worship, Lord Jesus. Receive the worship of your people. Lord, you alone are deserving of every, everything, Lord God. Glory, honor, praise, thanksgiving. You alone are deserving of it, God. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we just give you all the praise for everything you've done. Hallelujah. For your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your kindness, for your amazing grace. Hallelujah. Oh, where would we be without you, God? Hallelujah. Oh, it was your goodness, it was your kindness that brought us into this place today. It's your amazing grace, oh God, that brought us here today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, we're encouraged in the Word of God to seek the Lord while He may be, may be found, the Bible says. And, and in the time of Jesus when He was on earth, uh, people had many different reasons why they would seek the Lord. There were those who would seek the Lord because they were in need of Him. Lord, Because they are really needy of the Lord. They need the Lord. They need the Lord to perform the miracles for them. They need the Lord to, you know, to, uh, uh, to fulfill the dreams, the desires of their hearts. But then there are also those people who would come would seek Jesus to try to harm him you know the religious people were were there to oppose Jesus they were there for the wrong reason I was reading the scripture from the time Jesus was about to give his life on the cross and, and then in fact when he gave his life on the cross and after that there were people who were looking for Jesus even all the way to the tomb these were the kind of people who sought Jesus not only because they needed, they needed Jesus or they had something else in mind, but they sought the Lord because they wanted Him. They loved Him. Their motivation was love. They were looking for Jesus because they loved Jesus. Are we the kind of people in this room this morning? We are here this morning because we love Jesus. We have needs and it's alright to have needs. And the Lord will meet our needs. The greatest motivation that anyone can have in seeking the Lord, to seek Him in faith, yes, but faith that is motivated by love. Amen? If you love Jesus this morning, why don't you just raise your hand for a moment. I want you in your own words to tell the Lord under your breath, just tell Him how much you love Him today, how much thankful you are, how thankful you are for who He is in your life. Go ahead, come on, all over this place. All over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We honor your name in this place. We glorify your name in this place. We magnify your name in this place. We love you, Jesus. We love your name. We love your word. We love your presence. We love you, Jesus. Come on, when was the last time you told Jesus you love him with all your heart? Come on, church. Hallelujah. Mm, I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. If you got prayers this morning, just raise your hand for a moment. We want to pray with you. We believe with you. Sir Janine and I would just like to declare God's blessing over you today. Father, you know every heart, every situation. Every person in this place, maaram ka Dios, anong nga klase and mga pakinahanglan, struggles, needs, concerns we have. Lord, we just entrust these things to you. Knowing, Lord, that first of all, you love us. Second of all, you hear our prayers. You never forsake anyone who comes to you in faith. Jesus, we look to you today. The author and the finisher of our faith. We believe that you can. You're able to provide, perform the miracle, bless us with the blessing that we are really needing right here, right now. But Lord, more than anything else, we tap into your faithfulness today. We tap into your amazing grace today. We tap into your favor, something we do not deserve but something that you freely give. 
We declare your kindness over your people this morning. Lord, you are kind. You are good. This is our testimony that our God is good and that our God is good all the time. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again in our lives. Give us those testimonies, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we've heard of your fame. We've experienced it before. Do it again in our time, right here, right now. You know our needs. You know our address. You know who we are. God, we just entrust these things to you. We lay them down at the feet of Jesus. And we say, Lord God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we declare miracles are on the way. They belong to us. They're ours. In Jesus' name, we look to you, Jesus, and we give you praise because you are great. You can, but you are good. You want to. You really want to do this for us. And so we bless you right now. Come on, church. Go ahead. Give Jesus thanks in advance. Come on, give Him thanks in advance right now. Oh, we bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Come on, let's testify once again. Let's testify once again that we sought the Lord and He heard our prayers. Everybody in this room, Hallelujah. let's sing it together. Come on. I sought the Lord and He heard and He answered. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We bless Your name. Of the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. If you trust Him, Hallelujah. church, if you trust Him today. Go ahead and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, all over this place. From the front to the back, to the left, to the right. Every person, man, woman, young, old, give Him praise. Hallelujah. Can I ask everybody to please lift your hands and close your eyes for a moment. Just sense the presence of Jesus in this place. Nobody looking around. We welcome your presence. We receive your presence in this place. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Lord, like a river, flow and refresh every single heart, every single life in this place. As we order in the name of Jesus. So we honor the name that is above every name. Jesus. Amen. 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 One more time. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Give Him a clap offering, church. Oh, you can do better than that, church. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Of God's Word, I want you to turn with me. To the book of Hebrews chapter 4, I will, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, starting to read from verse 14 all the way to verse 16. The Word of the Lord. Are you ready for the Word today, church? So here's the Word of the Lord for all of us today. So then, since we have a high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. Can I have an amen in this place? This high priest, Jesus, of ours, understands our weaknesses. Anybody thankful for that? For he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Verse 16. So, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. If you're thankful for this word, go ahead and just give thanks to Jesus in this place. Lord, we thank you so much. You are our great high priest. You're the one who represents us before the Father. And Lord, you are the one who guarantees that when we come to your presence, Lord God, we will not receive condemnation or judgment, but we will receive grace and mercy. 
We thank you so much, God, for this word. We pray that you would just download this, impart this into our heart, into every heart. I pray that our hearts this morning are good grounds for your word to be sown into. Lord, we, we are careful to give you the glory and the praise as we look to the Holy Spirit for help this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Before I give you the title of the message, could you help me? Uh, if you can turn to three people and just tell them in the light of the, their conference, we've taken the time earlier, you know, to just get you guys excited because we don't want you guys to miss this um, opportunity, this awesome invitation, okay, from the Lord for all of us to position ourselves in His presence to receive the blessings that God intends for all of us. Amen. So three, talk to three people and tell them you are invited. You are invited. You are invited. You are invited. So the invitation is sent, given to you today. You are invited. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The title of the message this morning is Guest of Honor. Guest of Honor. Guess what? The Lord has a guest list for this awesome celebration, and you are one of those people, one of the guests in God's guest list today. Amen? Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your word. I pray that we will see what you want us to see, hear what you want us to hear, and receive what you want us to receive. All to the glory of your name, Lord, and for all our benefit in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Praise the Lord. Let me just go back to the text. First of all, let's just lay down the foundation this morning. I love, I love the contrast between verse 14, 15, and 16. The author of the book of Hebrews. Are you with me this morning? Are you guys ready? So I, I want to encourage everybody to settle down and, and just position yourselves ready for, for whatever God has for us today. So you read... Hebrews 4, 4, verse 14, all the way to verse 16. And the author of the book of Hebrews, which I believe without a doubt is Paul the Apostle, had given us the contrast between weakness and boldness. Like, they almost don't come side by side, right? They don't, they don't they're kind of, they're, there's a disconnect between, if you are weak, then you cannot be bold. But if you are bold, then you cannot be weak. But then, here in these verses, 14, 15, and 16, the Lord taught, you know, imparted to us through this, this, this passage that we can come boldly in the midst of our weakness. We can come boldly into the presence of God in the midst of our weakness. It says, it says that uh, the Lord knows our weaknesses and He is our high priest that could sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, God knows and God is aware of your weaknesses, Okay. Can you turn to someone and just make that person a little bit uncomfortable today? And then we're going to deal with that a little later. Are you aware of your weakness or weaknesses? Amen. Some of us are very proud of our weaknesses. Some of us are very, very, you know, private. When it comes to our weakness, we don't talk about the skeleton in the closet. Can I tell you something today? The Lord is fully aware of our weaknesses. You cannot hide from God. Nobody can hide from God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 4 verse 12 that we, everybody uh, stands naked before God. Everybody is, you know, stands bare before the Lord. Nobody can pretend. Nobody can try to, you know, fool God at any time, right? Because God is fully aware of our weaknesses. I know you are saved. I know you're forgiven. I know you're now called a child of God. You're no longer a sinner by practice. You are now a child of God. In fact, the Bible calls us saints. Believe it or not. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, even if you are called saints as a believer, you, are still, need, you still need to be processed. Okay? The, per, the perfecting of the saints is, is taught in Ephesians chapter 4. So, having said that, um, so God knows, God knows who you are. God knows who we are. God is fully aware of our weaknesses. But the, the amazing thing about Jesus is this. He doesn't cancel us in spite of the fact that He's aware, fully aware of our sinfulness and our weaknesses. 
But instead, He empowers us. Empower, instead, he, he strengthens us. Right? Come on, pahin gino. Pwede ba natin niya palapakan mga kamal? Can we just honor the Lord for His kindness? Wow. Only in God can these two concepts possibly come together. Weakness and boldness. In spite of our weakness, God calls us to come boldly into His presence. By the way, on what basis? On the basis of our high priest, Jesus Christ. On the basis of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, can we give Him a clap offering today? On the basis of our perfect sacrifice. Come on, somebody, you can do better than that. On the basis of our perfect sacrifice, not in your effort, not according to your ability, not according to your holiness, not according to your righteousness. In fact, in the scripture, righteousness is given as a gift. It's not something that we have earned. And, and, and that, that right positioning or um, uh, right standing before the Lord, as righteousness is defined in scripture, as right standing before the Lord, is given by virtue of the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that give, gave us access into the presence of God. That's why we are encouraged to come boldly. Because if you're only aware of your weakness and you're not fully aware of your high priest, you are not fully aware of your defender, you're not fully aware of your savior, then you will come into the presence of God reluctantly with fear, with doubt, with shame and condemnation. But if you're fully aware of your high priest, so we do, we have, we do have a high priest that could sympathize and out on weakness as much. He doesn't tolerate he doesn't affirm that part of our lives. He empowers us. Others, you know, makes, uh, makes a, a career out of just pointing out your weaknesses. What, what difference does it make if the only thing you do to me is just point out my weakness? And you don't empower me to become an overcomer. See, Jesus is different. Jesus is in a league of his own. It, because not only that he shows us the reality of where we are, but he helps us come to the level that he wants us to be in by giving us the empowerment. So he says, in the midst of your weakness, which I'm fully aware of, I want you to be aware also of your high priest, your defender, your mediator, your savior, Jesus the advocate. He's the one who stands on your behalf. You are now in Christ and Christ is now in you. Your hope of glory. The only hope of glory is Christ Jesus. Not your ability, not your efforts. Not in a million years you try in your own strength to come to the Lord, wash yourself, be righteous in and of your strength, and be able to earn or avail or achieve in your strength and power. That standard. See, everybody had fallen short of God's glorious standard. And only Christ Jesus, in His mercy and grace, by His crucifixion and His res resurrection, ginhatagan kita makautan ng abilidad. That's why He says, for those of you, Who's fully who are fully aware of your weaknesses, and you're also fully aware of your Savior, your Defender, your Advocate, and your High Priest, Jesus. Come boldly into the throne of grace. He is good. Come on, somebody, if you love Jesus, if you're thankful for Him, give Him praise. Come on, somebody, give Him praise. Not the political clap. That's not what Jesus deserves. Give Him what He deserves. Jesus, you're worthy of it. Today, I want, I want us to journey together, to track together this concept, this thought, this rediscovering the honor of being part of Jesus' guest list. So many of us have lost, lost sight, lost the appreciation, lost the amazement, lost the wonder of being a child of God, being able to come to the presence of God, having the access in prayer. Now, what na kita hiton pagkabilib? We lost sight, mga kabugtuan, and privilege. The concept of being privileged to stand before the awesome God. Today, I want us all to rediscover the privilege of being, being, being part of the guest list of Jesus. All right. So lately, I have been, we've been talking, me and my wife, we've been attending, attending, we've been invited to celebrations, and we've been counseling people, uh, the likes of Rafi and Shermaine, who's going to be married next week. And so they've been going together. They've been going, they've been going through their guest list. So we've been asking them, so who are your principal sponsors? Who are your secondary sponsors? Who are the VIPs, if you will, on Emo Celebration? So every celebration, the host will always provide a guest list. Who will be attending this celebration? 
And usually, these are the people that are very important to them, VIPs in their lives. Rightly so. Kaya kung ikaw magiging host, mga kabugtuan, hindi ka man mag invite hindi mo makilala. Because if it's a celebration that's special to you, then you're going to be inviting the people that are special to you. All right? Now, in the, in, in, and you might be wondering, Pastor, what is this about, all about guest of honor, VIPs, etc., or, or guest list? Listen. When Jesus died on the cross, and on the third day, as He declared, rose, He rose from the dead, that resurrection day, ladies and gentlemen, is tantamount to victory celebration. So, Pastor, why? Because Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, conquered death, hell, and the grave. And the power of Satan. The power of sin in your life. The judgment that the enemy has placed upon you. The labels of being a loser and, and, you know, and so on. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. This is more than like Manny Pacquiao, you know, receiving the honor of being the 8th division world champion. Right? This is more than receiving the honor of Steph Curry being named as a four-time MVP or, you know, the greatest shooter of all time, arguably. Mas labaw pa mga kautan, why? Jesus conquered the very thing that you and I are afraid about called death. Death, hell, and the grave. So, dapat may celebration, may victory party. And so I want to give you right now, I want us to journey together and be amazed once, once again of the heart of Jesus. Amazingly, Lord, you know. He had his guest list in the celebration. The first two weeks, the first Sunday and the second Sunday, so the first two weeks after the resurrection day, he met a few individuals, very important people. Sort of Jesus' Jesus's guest list, the people that he will meet right after he conquered. And this is basically these this two weeks. It's like, the victory party week. Jesus had these very important people in his list. Now, if you are the person who would conquer something, you would win something, you'll be awarded by something, or achieve something, you would probably have the, 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 new, the news, uh, the mga popular nga mga, uh, tawag yun, mga mainstream media to come and, you know, magkada kan press conference, master ka, oh, guys, you know, this and this and that. Or master ka, pwede ka ba naman ma-interview? Now, amazed like open Lord. I'm just blown away with the heart of God. And, and I believe that we will all learn from this. I will learn, we'll learn when it comes to humility. We will learn when it comes to, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, not wanting spotlight so much uh, and, and being okay with not being mentioned, being okay with not being appreciated publicly, and being okay with, with the fact that uh, you, know, you, you know who you are, you know what you've done, you know what your you know your God given capacity, and at the end of the day, all the glory belongs to God alone. Amen. So here, I want us to go through this guest list of Jesus, and hopefully, we will find ourselves in the list. In the book of Luke, chapter fifteen, I just want to give you the context because when we talk about party celebration, sometimes huh? God is too serious for those things. Now, let me show you Luke 15, brothers and sisters. For the sake of time, we're not going to go into all the details, but just give you some highlights. But Luke 15 tells you of three stories in response to the people who are accusing Jesus of being eating with publicans and sinners and being around or associating with unworthy people, as if some others that are calling them unworthy are worthy themselves. So, itaga ni Lord hin tutulunga stories, tutulunga parables about the lost, right? The lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. The lost so son, the lost coin, the lost sheep. Puro lost. Giving us a picture of who we are. And showing us also the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and his, uh, the, the desire of Trinity, the desire of our God to reach out to us in our state, in our spiritual state, that we are lost because of our sin. Are you with me? Are you tracking with me? So here, the lost sheep speaks of, you know, the lost, he was lost. The Lord left the 99, looked for the one. 
And the shepherd is being highlighted, which is Jesus the shepherd. Jesus. And then the lost coin uh, that uh, was look ginbiling mga kabugtuan and woman, which is a picture, brothers and sisters, of the, 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 when it comes to details, you know, women are very detailed people, right? Diri ko dito ginaamin mga husbands, but I think it's a gift for you guys. You're really into details in many ways. So, it's a picture of, of the Holy Spirit, the helper. One of the descriptions of, of, of the Holy Spirit, the first description of the Holy Spirit, of, of, of a woman in the Bible is to be the helper of the man. And so, uh, it speaks of the role of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit, no, no, no gender when it comes to God. God is Spirit of, of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the role there that the, that the gimbilingod mga kasulok-sulukan mga kautan, the role of the Holy Spirit to convict, to find people, to introduce them to Christ. None of us here who found Jesus or was found by Jesus ever come to relationship with Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. From creation to resurrection to the coming of Jesus, we will need the Holy Spirit every step of the way. And then the father who waited for the son. The son who was lost went away but came back again. Every single one of those stories represents or is a picture of all of us lost coin, lost sheep, lost son. And every single one of those stories reveals the heart of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to find us. Every single one of those stories ended up with a party and a real celebration. I said all that to say that God is the author of real parties and real celebration. Who says that God is boring? Can I say something about God? In the marriage supper of the Lamb, which will happen right after the rapture, from the looks of it, Jesus is coming very, very soon. I think if you have been watching the news, if you know what's going on in, in, around us, I mean from 2020 all the way to where we are right now, the th last three years, when we come into this particular decade, something was in the spirit shifted from pandemic to wars to fuel going up, food, famine, you know, you talk, it was talked about, discussed in the book of Revelation. Matthew 24, Jesus talking about the last days and the picture of where we are right now. Ang kahuman pandemic, bang, war. And then fuel, and then food. The concern of recession and inflation and so on and so forth and where we are right now and, and uh, what, what's going on around the world. Are you with me today? I'm not trying to scare you. Prophecy is not meant to scare us, but it's meant to prepare us. So you should know where we are. Okay. Having said all that, um, so, nakita ni Luke 15, mga kapatid, every, every one of those stories ended up in a party. I mention all that because when the rapture is over, pag rapture, when we are taken by the Lord, snatched from this place, all right, and we'll be with the Lord, all hell breaks loose for seven years, there's great tribulation on the earth, judgment on the earth. The, the, this is the, the, lamb, the, the, the lamb's anger and, and, and rage. The, you know, I mean, judgment for the people who did not receive the Lord on earth. This is not even the final judgment yet. Seven years. You know where we are during this time? We'll be in heaven with the Lord. The church will be raptured for seven years. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. If you read your Bible, you should get excited. I'm saying God is the author of real parties. This marriage supper of the Lamb will, will last, this party, this celebration will last for seven years. The Lord doesn't know how to party. He knows how to do it. Right? Kitani, this is an example. This is a picture. And, and Luke, Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son. Look at this in Luke 15, verse 17. Starting in verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, talking about the, the, the uh, lost son, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. This is a person who's lost, run away from God. It's a picture of all of us who run away from God because of sin. We were lost. We lost our way. And the Lord, the Lord is waiting for us. The Father is the picture of God is waiting for the Son to come home. And the Son came to realize, what have I been doing? I've been missing out on, on the blessing of being with my Father, being in my Father's house. You haven't been going to church? Welcome to church. You belong here. You're home in the house of God. Let's go, verse, verse 18. I will go home to my Father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And so he... he kind of rehearsed, and saying, yeah, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to meet my father. And, and so, he repented. 
Verse 17 was the returning, the repenting. He changed his mind. He said, I'm lost. And you know, I'm lost. I'm away from my father. I need to return. Repentance. So he went back. I'm no longer, nasinya, even if I'm no longer be acknowledged as a son, at least magahe, magiging servant na lang ko rito, better off a servant in my father's house than a son far away. Are you here? All right, here. A hard servant. Are you tracking with me today? Yeah. Introduction. Help me right now because, uh, okay, 20. And then, so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off. Look at the attitude, the heart, the father. The father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. Not condemnation, not judgment. He with love and compassion, he ran to, to his son. This is the first time, if the father is a picture of the, if the father here is a picture of the father God, this is the first time you see the father, God ran. Run not away from you, but run towards you. That's the love of God. That's the amazing grace of God. Come on, somebody. You can do better than that. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. 21. Son, his son, his, his son said to him, Father, you know, I have sinned against you. You know, he, and he again practiced. Both him no longer worth of being called your son. You know, the father, verse 22, did not even answer that. And he said, but his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his fingers, sandals for his feet. All this, these things are significant. We don't have time to go into all the details, but verse 23. And kill the calf. This is not just one of the animals, the calf. The fatted calf. So this is the one, kung maghaaton pa nga context, mga kabuton, ang ginpipinatambok para at Christmas. Ang ginaandam para kan intoy niya birthday. Are you here? Ang pinaura ini kay parin ang special nga event. This is what the Lord, for somebody who is undeserving, somebody who rebelled, somebody who run away from God. I'm preaching the Bible here, church. Come on, somebody. We must celebrate with a feast. In verse 24, for his son, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Verse 25. Verse 25. And meanwhile, the older son, and mga iba aton niya, truly worthy, you know, and we've tried so hard to try to please God with our lives, and may nakading nga naabot ng mga bago, the new kids in town, new kids in town, nga sila nga, diri mga worthy, okay, nagpinasawa lang nila, pag abot ginhangkopan man ni Lord, dinagselos na kita. Ari pa ba ka mo, mga kabugtuan? You better be ready. When we pray it and revival, we pray because sinners will come, the unworthy will come, and if God will embrace them, are you ready for that? <laughs> Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing. Am I reading the Bible? So a, God is showing us a picture. He's not a boring God. He knows how to throw a party. He knows what it means to celebrate. He has heard music and dancing in the house. So if you, some of you are kind of Uncomfortable with the idea ng mga kalokso church. Is it okay ng maringas sa kita diri? Bangin pagabot talang mamingaw. Can you imagine if there will be five billion people? Singon five billion na lang malangit. You think if you will make it to heaven, it will be silent? You'll be shouting, Master ka, na lagit ako. Oh my God. Anyways, somebody will get it. Somebody. The older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. So just to show you that God knows how to throw a party. An example of the marriage supper in the land in heaven is seven years. For those of you who are getting, getting tired of serving the Lord, you are tired of your Christian life, I don't want to give up. Because you're going to miss the real party. Please, stay there. Hang in there. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Harvest time is coming. Come on, Jesus is coming back. You cannot quit now. You cannot give up now. Come on, if you want to see the harvest of what you have sown in the past, sayang man lah, 20 years can have been serving the Lord, 15 years you have been serving the Lord, now you're going to quit? Tell somebody, don't quit now. You cannot quit now. Just because everybody's doing it. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, please don't give up. Whatever you need to do not to give up, please don't. Amen. All right, okay. Okay, all right. I need to, because this is introduction, all right? So, go back it on Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day, Jesus just conquered death, hell, and the grave. It's supposed to be the first two weeks celebration before Jesus goes back to the Father. And so, guess who he had in his guest list? People to talk to, people to me. I'm talking about the mighty, 
Hey, by the way, the word in the Bible, in the book of Hebrew, I think even in the, in the Greek, if the word mighty that ex- de- describes God, mighty God, you know one of the one of the translations? Superhero. So you talk about your su- an atong mga superhero, mga kabugtuan, mga, medyo naaringit pa, pabago-bagong isip, you know, but the real superhero, superhero in our lives, it God, He conquered death, hell, and the grave for you. He had Himself crucified, He conquered it. He conquered mocking, insults. He conquered all that. Being misconstrued, being misunderstood. Being betrayed with a kiss for 30 pieces of silver. He went through all that because of you. He was not crucified for his sin. He was crucified for your sin and my sin. I love you with the the love of the Lord, but please stop the drama now. You're missing God. Missing on what God has intended for you. This is no longer time to just highlight your feeling. I'm not saying feeling is not real. But I'm saying this. Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's right. It may be real, but it's not right all the time. So please get up. Let's all rise up in Jesus' name. For goodness says. For goodness sake. Praise God. All right. Oh, Lord, help me. So here is the Jesus, Jesus guesses. I have four in the list. Number one, the desperate. The first person he showed himself up to. In verse 13 and 14, John 20, 13 and 14. Can you go there? John 10. Mary Magdalene. Jesus cast out seven demons out of this woman. Some would say he used to be a, she used to be a prostitute, but it's, it's not so clear in the scripture. But obviously this one is, this woman is so desperate. He followed the Lord. Listen to me right now. From the time of Jesus' ministry, she was one of the supporters of Jesus' ministry. Up to the crucifixion, she was one of those that was what, what was, was with Mary, looking at Jesus during the cru- crucifixion, and John and Magdalene was there. And the early morning in the resurrection, I'm ta- you talk about commitment, love, passion for God. Ayaw ko niyo judge ang mga tao nga mga used to be losers. This woman, Jesus cast out seven demons out of her. But she was one of the most passionate, one of the most committed, one of the most faithful disciples of Jesus. And during this time, brothers and sisters, who highlights in this side of the world, who highlights men more than women. In fact, they look down on the capacity of women and the role of women in the society. But during this time, guess who Jesus first showed himself to after resurrection? A woman? Come on, woman, if you're a woman today. Cheer up. Cheer up. God knows your heart. God knows your God-given capacity. God knows your role. And by the way, husbands, the woman of God, the woman that God has sent you with, is supposed to help you. You need help. I need help. Pastor Janine, I need help. Okay? I love na pag ha Pastor Tama ka, pero tama na. Okay? But you know what? Can we be real here today? One of the people in Jesus' guest list is desperate and probably despised. Listen to me right now. If you feel if you're feeling forsaken or despised or desperate, I want you to know you are invited. You are in Jesus' guest list. The mighty did not look for the famous. The mighty showed himself to the weak. That amazes me about Jesus. Can we give him a clap offering today? When Manny Pacquiao became the 8th division world champion, okay, Akatuhi America, mga kabagtuan, guess who was in the big victory party? The famous, the celebrities. Right? Wari nga, ang iba, maupay na lang ang iba, ang iba na highlight na dito, Hibuboy, na highlight na niya mga team, mga crew, the kitchen staff, and everybody was preparing the behind the scenes people. Usually, if we throw a party, we kind of highlight the Jesus, He's different. He doesn't need a spotlight. It, Jesus doesn't need a, the spotlight to, to kind of validate him. Where was he? He was talking, encouraging the woman. The woman said, where did they put my Jesus? Where did they bring my Jesus? I like that confession. And Mary Magdalene said, they took my, my Jesus. Where did they lay him? This woman did not know that Jesus rose from there. And then Jesus spoke to a very, I was reading it. When Jesus mentioned her name, Mary, she said, Rabboni, 
Master. Wow, imagine the risen King, the risen Christ, calling your name, being specific. I mean, this, I love Jesus. What is mga camera? What is that Facebook? Di ka pa magkaka Facebook live? What is that TikTok at that time? What is that mga fake news? Salamat na labat. Tunga panahon kamo la you and your Jesus. He was there, the recent king. He just conquered death, hell, and the grave, and and Satan na bugbug sarado mga kapatid na now. He spent the time with you. Look, this victory party week, you are in number one the least, the despised, and the desperate. Number two, in the guest list. Come on, put it there. The discouraged. The discouraged and the disappointed. Look, 24, verse 17. Look. Look, 24, 17. This is victory week, right? He asked the two disciples and wrote to the mouse, what are you discussing so intently, intently that you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Why were two, these two disciples... So sad. First, they did not believe. If it was me, bahin ko sige ng kapera. Ano muna kay di man ka muna nunod. Salamat talaga diri ako Jesus. Amen. Jesus, so patient, so gracious, so merciful, so loving. Instead of instead of spending time with the who's who, he was with the who. Who? She was. She. He was there, you know, spending time with these two discouraged and disappointed disciples. This is the first, this is the, the day of resurrection. When I saw, I was, I was just, I did not plan to, to give this message, but when the Lord opened my eyes to this, sunod, sunod, mga kapatid, the Lord showing me this side of Jesus. So if you're discouraged today, if you look at this story, Luke 24, how Jesus spent time, 11.2 kilometers, seven mile journey. He took the time to open their eyes. He took the time to talk to them. In fact, how sweet. He even broke bread with them. On resurrection day, where was the mighty God? The conqueror? The champion? Where was he? Spending time with the despised and the desperate. Walking with the discouraged and the disappointed. Amazing. You think that kung sikat-sikatan na nimo gilulok up nga person wala na tiya panahon na ako ampot makilala pa ba tiya nakilala ka pa ako I received a call from someone na siya I heard about new life Tacloban how you, your church is growing na siya nakilala ka pa ako aniya pala bosses wala pa mag introduce na siya you are so and so from Kalbayog I know you I have not forgotten you Kuno na naton makabutod mo maka, maka experience ang level of success people will not know you anymore here is Jesus. He just conquered death, hell, and the grave. Who was he spending time with? Who was he walking with? Who was he talking to? Who was he having a meal with? Discouraged and disappointed. Is anybody discouraged today and disappointed? Listen to me. Jesus is not despising you. Jesus is not forgetting you. He's not forsaking you. In fact, he's willing to walk with you. To open your eyes to so some other realities other than the reality that you're aware of. By name of reality, like what a budget. Mahuman and Christmas and down a lot. And a lot of the hand and a conan of my birthday. My graduate, the quantity, my papa's coming, my Christmas, my company, my company, my own, and a con bonus. I'm both going to take in Bentito and bonus. We are posing 13th month. I want to pay to. And the baggage papa also made in a 14th month. Jesus name, I rebuke that. And I sing an Ibanga, my mga company, my dahan. People that are responsible, you're thinking about people that you love, how you can bless them, how you. There's that weight, that that burden. Of course, you don't share that with everybody. So who do you talk to other than those people? You talk to Jesus? Listen to me right now. Jesus will not despise. This is not that important. Well, if it is important to you, it is important to Jesus. Listen, if it's important to you, it's important to Jesus. The Bible says, you know what the Bible says about cast all your cares upon the Lord. Some would argue, some would encourage my saying, are you know what? The Lord busy, busy hand. He has what? How many billions of people crying out to him? Some billions of people that he need, he need needs to attend to. Are you need to I, I used to. I, someone talked to me before talking about one person that I said I'm going to be communicating to. Nasiya, ikaw may panahon niya para imo. He's too busy for that. 
Somebody might be thinking today, Jesus will only entertain the big problems or the big concerns. Listen, the Bible says, all your cares. Big ones and little ones. If it's a care to you, Jesus cares for you. And so he cares about it too. Somebody say amen. Wow. Number three, the least. They're deeply afraid. They're deeply afraid. Look at that in John verse 20, 19. Look at NIV. I want to read from the NIV. 20. John 20 verse 19. Listen, everybody. That Sunday evening, the disciples, on the evening of the first day of the week, which is Sunday, by the way, napansin niyo, Resurrection Day Sunday. And second week, kinikid pan meet ni Lord, another Sunday. The Lord's Day. Amen? All right. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked, listen to this, for fear of the Jewish leaders. Now, imagine with me, kung ikaw saan mga disciples of Jesus, you are identified with Jesus, identified with Jesus, you're associated with Jesus, and people know who you are. And your Savior, the one you risk everything to follow, seemingly is gone. And now the leaders, the Jewish leaders, especially the religious ones, and of course, they were the Roman, the Roman Empire at that time. It was complicated politically, religiously. And if you're a believer of Jesus and now he's gone, the boldness level is different if he's with you, if you're aware of that. But this time around, he's gone. So for fear of the Jews, look what they said. The doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. It seems to me that Jesus is so opposite, contrary to what we think naturally. That Jesus is just impressed with the, the altogether lovely people, the people that are always perfect, people that always behave. It seems to me that Jesus is attracted to, because he said, he is the chief physician who looks for the sick. He did not come for the righteous, he came for the sinners. He came for the weak, the forsaken, the abandoned, the marginalized the outcast. Attacks on Jesus. Despised and de desperate. I want to talk to her. Mary. There are, disciple, there are disciples that are discouraged right now walking. I'm going to walk with them. I'm going to spend time with them. I have my children that are afraid right now. They lock the doors for fear of the Jews. I'm going to come to them and give them peace. I'm talking about this is the first two weeks after resurrection. The guest list of Jesus is full of what? The undeserving? Wow. Jesus spoke peace towards them. So if you're afraid, we encourage people to walk in faith. But if you're afraid with something, listen to me right now. The Bible tells us that although Jesus would not encourage you to be fearful, but if you are afraid, how many times have we seen in the scripture where Jesus appeared when the disciples were in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the storm, Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. Angel came to Mary, announced something, do not be afraid, fear not. Like every single time, some even have said that the fear not or do not be afraid appeared 300, what? Something th times. We're not sure if, if that exactly is, but the reality is this. Whenever you find Jesus, you always find comfort. You always find peace. You always find assurance. Amen. Wow, Jesus declared to those who are afraid, peace. Instead of fear, fear, I declare peace into your hearts and your minds. Jesus. The last one. And we're going to close. The doubting. The doubting. Look at this. I was looking at this. Lord, amazing. Ka. Look at John 20. Verse 24, 2024, NIV. One of the 12 disciples, look at this, everybody. Thomas. Can we go back to the uh, NLT version? One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. Stop. Actually, Thomas had an encounter with the Lord after this, and then he did not become... Doubting, he did not become doubtful any, anymore 
Jesus, okay? So, kita manggod, usually, people will judge you or describe you by the how they met you. Kung makita ang kaniya, nga, ito nga tayong pordoy ikaw, masing nga hikuan nga pordoy. Or ito nga person nga failure. But that was an event. That was an experience. That's the person. The person had progressed. Nag-asinso na nga ni, di ka lamara. Para sa itong blind Bartimaeus, he did not stay a blind. We always always refer to people on the basis of their past experience. Di kita, di kita nakakamove on. Gimbago na ni Lord. Gimpasin suna ang ginoo. Gimbuligan na ni Lord. Stop, stop, putting, stop putting period on people. God, gimbutang nga lang kama. Ayaw pagbutang period. So, by the way, I, had, I said that because Thomas, nasa rin kita, the doubting Thomas. Now, at this particular time, he was in doubt, but he did, he did encounter Jesus, saw the reality that Jesus rose from the dead. But in this particular time, Nasa the Bible, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. Stop. When did Jesus appear to the, the rest of the disciples? On Sunday morning. Sunday. Where was Thomas? He was not with them. Okay. Simply learning a message, but this is something very important. Ayaw lagi pag absent on Sunday. Ayaw imiss it church. Waray-waray yung para dordritsyo ka klaro. Ayaw, I miss an opportunity to encounter God because if you have that kind of mentality and attitude, you are doing yourself a disservice. You're not doing yourself a favor. He Thomas nag end up na doubting because obviously he was not in church. He was not having fellowship with the rest of the disciples when Jesus appeared. That's why, pag mga disciples, look at this. Verse 24, 25. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nails once in his hands. Look at the mentality. To see is to believe. Di ba diritong ka ng Christianan mindset? Because your exposure, ladies and gentlemen, will determine your response to life. So be in the right place at the right time. I'm not saying don't go to the beach. I'm not saying don't, don't go out there and have a party for your family. I'm just saying be in the right place at the right time. Don't miss your date with the Lord. There are only, how many? 52 weeks, 52 Sundays in a year. I want to encourage you with this because mga kabugtuan, naturally, kita nga Christians, we got saved. Diri kita karuyag mag church. Remember those days? You will give all kinds of reasons why you don't want to miss the church. Please, I encourage you. I know it's 21st century. I know it's 2023. But I encourage you, these are, these are Christian values you cannot lose. Oh, come on. Can I, can I have an amen in the house of God? Today. Now, saying, I won't believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hand, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wounds in his side. 26. Suddenly, eight days later, the disciples were together again, and the 12, and this time Thomas was with them. Praise the Lord. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Next, next. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into my wound. In my side, be faithless any longer. Believe. And then he actually Thomas. Next, my Lord and my God, Thomas explained. Realize niya, good mangud. Jesus rose from the dead. And then you have Peter. G- Peter already knew that Jesus rose from the dead. In John 21, you have this story of when he went back fishing and he brought some of the disciples with him. So they were out there. Now please imagine with me, a few days, few days ago, you just, you just denied Jesus three times with cursing and swearing. Nag-end up ako hiyangan na malikas yan, na muyayaw hiya, just to try to emphasize, I don't know the man. You denied Jesus a few days ago with cursing and swearing. What do you think was in the mind of Peter? Probably at this point in time, Possible ba bang ma-restore ako, Gino? Karaw na ako, Ginhim. I was with Jesus. I denied Him three times. That's why Jesus went to them. What happened in John 21 was this. Jesus Himself went to the beach where they were. Nakita ni Jesus, cut the story short. They went there. It's the Master. Nasa the disciple whom the Lord loves, John. It's the Master. So they went there only to find, ladies and gentlemen, there was breakfast ready. Oh, come on, come on, church. Come on, church. All of us needs to learn from this. 
Aa, the unreasoned king who conquered death, hell, and the grave, na prepare lagi hapon ng breakfast. Meringa mantik na mga hukto. Ginserbihan niyan mga tao nga seemingly in doubt at the moment. What did he do? He had a conversation with Peter. Fast forward, he restored him back to ministry. And I said, Peter, you did. Peter, do you love me more than this? Whatever it was, Lord, you know that I love you. Second time, third time. And he was kind of hurt because Jesus repeated it three times. Now, wait, wait a minute. What, the, what, what, what does it remind us of the three times? He denied Jesus three times. This time around, Jesus was trying to help him confess and declare his love and allegiance to him. Peter, you love me more than this? I love you. Lord, you know that I love you. Three times. Lord, I love you. And each time he would say, I love you, Lord, what was the reply of the Lord? Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. What does it mean? He, Jesus, on resurrection weeks, right, was thinking about the least of us, thinking that they will be taken care of. And he went to a person who just denied him three few days ago. Few days ago, somebody denied him three times and now he is with him. And now he, Jesus is talking to this guy. Not only that he's giving him a second chance or a second opportunity, he's giving him a promise of restoration by telling him, feed my sheep. In other words, translation, I still trust you. You can still go back to ministry. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Wow. The guest list of Jesus, the despised and the desperate. Second, the discouraged and the disappointed, the deeply afraid, and the doubting, both Thomas and Peter. But Jesus restored every single one. He said, Jesus, good. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all of you, for weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I want to say to you right now, you are invited to the party. You're invited to the celebration. You are in Jesus' guest list. You are in the mind of Jesus today. Jesus' heart goes out to the underdogs, the marginalized, the forsaken, the outcast, the lost, the last, and the least. I want to encourage you today, to come to Jesus and draw near. In your weakness, approach with boldness, knowing that Jesus, your high priest, understands your heart. He, he could sympathize with you. Others will probably misunderstand you and judge you, but Jesus knows the deepest part of your heart. In spite of your action, God sees your heart. Don't try to justify it. But really, God looks at the heart. And he's trying to help somebody here in this place who may be weak. God wants to lift you up. If you are discouraged, God want, wants to encourage you. If you are down, God wants to strengthen you. If you are weak, God wants to give you strength and empower you today. Lift your hands up to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm here. I respond to your invitation. I want to thank you for putting me in your guest list, Lord. Of all the people that you would spend time with, on these significant weeks after resurrection, Lord, you chose to be with the weak. You chose to be with the outcast. You chose to be with the doubtful and the desperate and the deeply afraid. How good are you? You are good and you are faithful. Somebody give Jesus praise in this place right now. Come on, hallelujah. Give him praise right now. Give him praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident as seasons change, His faithfulness remains. Let's sing it, sing it together. And I believe. That I will see the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident as seasons change, your faithfulness remains. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness toward us, your kindness, 
your amazing grace. Today, we receive your word, your impartation, the assurance that when we come to you, will never despise us. So in our weakness, we come with boldness, knowing that you, Jesus, our high priest, is going to give us grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. We love you today. We honor you, Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that you were blessed by today's message. Here are some ways how you can continue to give your tithes and your offering here in New Life Tacloban. Thank you, church, and God bless.